Mike Ferrari at breakfast on LBC. Call 0345 6060973. Coming up on eight minutes before nine, let's get the latest then as uh, the British services and security forces see the situation in Ukraine from Justice Secretary and, and Deputy Prime Minister Dominic Raab, who joins me now. It is being widely reported on media, not just here in the UK, that Putin has now been deploying cluster bombs. Um, Deputy Prime Minister, A, are you able to confirm that? And B, if it is the case, what does that bring, that, does that bring to the conflict? Good morning. Good morning, Nick. Well, uh, I can't confirm that, but I've seen the reports. And uh, I- in one sense, uh, as... Putin's catastrophic decision to invade Ukraine has played out uh, and he has stumbled and stuttered with the initial steps. It has not been the cakewalk that he had said. Um, And that's partly because of uh, the the huge courage shown by the Ukrainian forces in resisting and also I think the actions that we've taken uh, sanctions wise, uh, which have really uh, pinched Russian war machine that he is leading, I think we can see him try now and uh, regain the initiative and therefore we can expect more heavy-handed tactics. I think the one development that we can also see is that uh, there is a clear determination from the international community uh, to make sure that any war crimes uh, are held to account, whether it is uh, Putin uh, or those around him in Moscow or commanders on the ground. And they must know if they carry out those orders, there is a reasonable prospect now that uh, the evidence will be captured, uh, will be will be gathered, and that uh, they will end up in the dock of a court and end up spending their uh, twilight years behind bars. That is the message the international community is sending. And you, you will have already seen the ICC prosecutor in The Hague, uh, who happens to be a, a Brit, obviously independent, Kareem Khan, say that they are actively looking at the reports coming out of Ukraine. Is it your belief that one day we might see Putin in that court, Deputy Prime Minister? Well, look, if there are... If it were proven uh, that cluster bombs were deployed on schools and civilian areas. uh, The Lorium is always reluctant to get into speculative hypothetical scenarios, but let me say this very clearly. If there are violations of the laws of war, there will be responsibility and accountability for that. And Nick, I would just point that we've shown... We will not allow those responsible just to sit it out and to wait and hope the international uh, attention will move elsewhere. We've just shown that recently with Radovan Karadzic. You'll remember one of the butchers of the Balkans. He ended up after years behind uh, in the dock of a court in The Hague and he's now in a British high security prison where he will see out his days. That is the message. There will be no impunity for war crimes. Coming back to the events in Ukraine, what practical support is the United Kingdom offering to Ukraine or Ukrainians? So we've uh, trained, I think it's 20,000 troops under Operation Orbital. Uh, We've provided anti-tank weapons, 2,000. We've provided an economic support package of 100 million. We added to it yesterday 40 million of humanitarian support. And the Home Secretary announced in relation to uh, those fleeing uh, that we will take uh, via bespoke mechanism, a humanitarian mechanism that she will set up, up to 100,000. We're doing everything we can. Of course, the impact that we've having it's just worth saying uh, the sanctions that we've taken with our uh, allies uh, and our partners we've seen the Russian ruble fall to record by record margins against the, the dollar we've seen the Russian stock exchange fall by record margins and we've seen the central bank of Russia because it's been denied uh, because of sanctions taken on it which is pretty unprecedented I have to say we've seen it have to double interest rates that is the mechanism by which we are starving Putin's war machine When you look at the measures that the British government will be taking against some of uh, Putin's so-called buddies or allies or the the oligarchs, if you'll allow that Putin seems to be in a world of his own, do you think it will actually have that much impact, Deputy Prime Minister? Yes, I think it can. And we've been looking at this and taking incremental measures. And of course, when I was Foreign Secretary, we introduced the so-called Magnitsky sanctions, which uh, had their auspices in the biggest tax fraud against the Russian people in history. We applied that. We didn't take any money from asset- Russians, though, did we, until ah, today? Well, no, go we ahead, applied sorry, visa bans and, and asset freezes to those responsible, not just for human rights abuses, but also for corruption. Yes, you do need uh, the, 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 to go through the due process on that. But is it having an impact? Yes, I think it is. I think it can directly have an impact on on those financing Putin's war machine. But what what, what I think we also need to be clear on is that this will be a long haul. Notwithstanding the early stuttering and stumbling of Putin, I think we need to steel ourselves, and the Ukrainian people will will know this, uh, for a long haul uh, with strategic patience in making sure that Putin fails in Ukraine. 
The Polish Prime Minister is suggesting Europe could be facing its biggest refugee crisis since the days of the Second World War. Were that to be the case, is the UK being welcoming enough? I think so. And we've got a tradition of this. I've, I've been on your show before. I talked about what we've done in recent years for to, to, to provide uh, a safe haven for the Hong Kong British national overseas citizens. We talked about this in the context of Afghanistan. And true to form, we've stepped up and we've said that we will provide a bespoke humanitarian scheme to allow up to 100,000 Ukrainians to come. Of course, as the Ukrainian ambassador to the UK said over the weekend, most Ukrainians don't want to flee. Those that do want to stay as close to their home country as they possibly can. So, so I, I think it's natural to expect that those in Central and Eastern European uh, it, it countries will uh, will be the, the major uh, point of uh, uh, where, where Ukrainians will want to go. But we've also got to support the Poles and others and work with the UN agencies to try and uh, have a concerted effort to provide haven for those fleeing persecution. Just to pick up on a couple of words, I think possibly some refugee charities might not agree with you, Deputy Prime Minister. They've pointed to the fact they've even called the UK government to offer heartless and mean-spirited because Priti Patel, your senior colleague, is requesting checks, whereas you'll be aware the EU plan is to allow Ukrainians to stay for up to three years without any formal process. Mean-spirited and heartless, how would you respond? No, I don't accept that. We will respond with our hearts. That's why we are saying that uh, up to 100,000 can come. Uh, but, but I think it's absolutely right. We're not... In introducing a whole load of bureaucracy around this. You talk about visas, which is saying that there's some basic security checks. I have to say, I think the Home Secretary is absolutely right on this because when you've got people coming from uh, a war zone, you want to make sure it is those that we want to uh, extend uh, open arms to, not those who might wish us ill. All right, coming to other matters, Chelsea's billionaire, and we've touched briefly uh, on some of Mr Putin's uh, colleagues or allies, uh, Roman Abramovich says he's trying to broker a peace between Russia and Ukraine. Noting that the talks that have taken place so far could be a bit of a sham, Putin has only sent an, an attaché from his cultural department. Could Mr Abramovich be the key? Mr Rob? Who knows? I would say this. First of all, um, I think the prospects for diplomacy at the moment are slim, but we must always make sure that we keep the door to a diplomatic resolution open without, I think, instilling too many hopes in it. And it's certainly also true to say that the financiers who are close to uh, Putin, the oligarchs and the like, are often one of the most uh, important points of leverage. And that's where our sanctions have been directed and targeted. Should Mr Abramovich denounce Putin and his actions? Other so-called oligarchs have. I think every right-thinking person should denounce what Putin has done, not just as catastrophic for Ukraine and European security, but as catastrophic for, for ordinary Russians. And when you see the doubling of interest rates by the Russian central bank to 20%, you can see what we mean by that. A couple of last points. I understand a number of other European countries have supplied fighter jets to Ukraine. Will the RAF be doing that? Uh, I can't comment on that now. What we've been clear about is that we've provided training, we've provided anti-tank uh, weapons, uh, and um, all I would say is nothing is off the table. We want the Ukrainians to steal their resolve, to support them in what's been, I have to say, a very courageous early defence, and we want Putin's war machine to fail in Ukraine. So fighter jets could be a possibility. It is on the table, as it might be said. Uh, I, I would put it that I don't think we've ruled anything out. OK, and lastly, on a lighter note, notwithstanding the gravity of the story, uh, Phil in Wapping says he knew you were coming on. Dominic Raab is an even bigger Chelsea fan than I am. What does he make of the future of the club and this idea of a trust? I understand you are quite a keen Chelsea fan and Mr Ramovich, although the, the plan is, I understand, slightly mired in legal... Well, ha, we have a lawyer. Mired in legal issues because the trustees are, are nervous of taking it over. Dominic Raab. Lord Chief Justice I'm Raab. I, I am a Chelsea fan, um, and uh, but look, I, the, the uh, internal dynamics in the club, I think uh, I need to respect their uh, their ability to lawfully arrange that for themselves, and uh, uh, we watch with interest. And well, how will Chelsea interest. remember the tenure of Mr Abramovich as stewarding the club? Look, I, I just don't want to get drawn into that. What I'm focused on is critically uh, stealing the resolve okay. of the Ukrainians, making sure we keep the international team together and focusing every ounce of energy on starving poor Putin's war machine so it fails in Ukraine. Ever met Mr Abramovich in the boardroom or anything? <laughs> no. Not yet. No, not happened. OK. No, I...
I, I, no, no, and I wouldn't. You wouldn't choose to be. You wouldn't shake his hand. No, I don't. Uh, I, I, I don't think he's been in the UK recently. But no, I look. Uh, I support Chelsea Football Club, uh, and I'm uh, very focused uh, on deterring Putin in this reckless misadventure. That's the only thing I care about. Grateful for your time. Thank you, Dominic Rob, appearing here. Of course, Deputy Prime Minister appearing here on LBC at two minutes after eight. Let's get the news from Holly Harris. On your radio, on Global Player, and. Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. From Global's newsroom, the Deputy Prime Minister has told LBC the Russian invasion of Ukraine has stumbled and stuttered.